Hey there, how's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to look at how to log in our users so as to enable them to access the various protected routes on our application. For now, we are having our front end which is separate from our back end and they are using JWTs to authenticate users. So the JWTs always keep the user information of the currently logged in user. So this is a simple diagram that will show you the whole entire process that you are going to follow in this video. What we have is our backend and our browser. Consider our browser as our React app and our backend as our Flask API. So for now we are having our user who fills in the form on the front end and then when they log in, they can be able to send their username and password to the slash API slash login route. And when they do this, the backend will generate a JWT that will identify the users. So this token is returned as a message body to the client. So the browser will save this client within what we call local storage. So this is not uh, mo the most secure way of storing user information, but for now it's what we are going to use since it's the simplest way. So now a user can also be able to uh, access a protected route. And in this case, the example shows us they create a node. So when they create a node, they fill in a form that creates a node, and then they send the data. When they send this data, the data basically has the token which they will use to access that protected route, just like you can see here. They send it with an HTTP post method, and then within the content, they also specify the authorization headers that contain the token that basically identifies the user who is currently creating a node. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to be making use of a simple tool called React Token Auth. React Token Auth simplifies this process for us under the hood and helps us to do all of this as it provides us different hooks that can enable us to log in users and do the various authentication functionalities. So let's get started. So I'm going to head over to the React Token Auth GitHub repository. So right here is where uh, the React Token Auth GitHub repository is, and it is just a tool that can help us to do the basic functionality, just like we explained in the demonstration. So right now, when the author says they couldn't recommend this, but since we are building a small app just for sh just for learning a concept, uh, we can be able to use this kind of uh, functionality. So the first thing is to install React Token Auth. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. So npm install React Token Auth. Then our Visual Studio Code, I'm going to add a new terminal. And then simply, I'll actually cd into client. So I'm going to go to the client. And within our client, I'm going to install React Token Auth. Now, after we have created our React we have installed our React token auth. The next thing is going to be to uh, create an auth folder or an auth file in which we're going to create our provider. So our provider is that a function that gives us uh, access to the various hooks that we're going to use to authenticate our users. We need to go right in here, our folder, and within our source folder, I'm going to create a new file, which I'm going to call uh, authentication so i'm just going to call it auth.js this is going to be our auth.js and uh, within auth.js i'm going to head over to the github repository so i'm going to just come right in here so what we need is to create a, a an auth provider so i'm going to import create auth provider from your auth token and then import the various hooks for example use auth auth fetch Login and logout. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to close this. I'm going to say import, then I'm going to say import create uh, auth, auth provider. So this is going to be auth provider. So it's going to be this uh, from React token auth. After doing this, we are going to uh, create the various functions that we are going to use to log in our users, uh, log out our users, and so on. So I'm going to head over to this, so I'll copy this. So basically, this example is in TypeScript. I'm going to explain how it's going to work. So I'm going to copy all of this and paste it in here. 
So since we are not using TypeScript, we are going to be using JavaScript. So I'm just simply going to uh, remove these types. Let's remove these types. So what we have here is a simple function that creates a auth provider. So it gives us access to uh, methods such as use auth, auth page, uh, login, logout. And then what you have to pass in is the access token key. So the access token key simply refers to the key that's going to act as our access token that's going to be stored in our local storage, just like we're going to see. So I need to change this to uh, access underscore token. This is because the response that our server gives us uh, gives us the access token labeled as access token. So an update token is simply a function that's going to update our access token. Just like you saw in the previous videos, we created that route that helps us to access the project. I mean, helps us to refresh our token in case it has expired. So an update token simply makes a request to the route that refreshes our token. Let's head over to our client and our backend. So I'm going to go to localhost 5000 slash docs to access the docs of our API. So the docs of our API show us that the refresh is both refresh. So I'm going to update this as well. I need to come right here and change this to slash auth. This is going to be slash auth slash refresh. And this is which is going to update our token. So in this case, what it needs is to access uh, the refresh token in this case. So I'm going to, going to change this because it will be able to send the refresh token. So, because when we are refreshing our token, what we need is to send a refresh token so as to acquire a new access token. So I'm also going to change this to, um, this is going to be refresh underscore token. And then I'm going to say, so for the various routes, we are going to be making use of these various uh, methods, login, logout, use auth, just like you're going to see. So you need to head over to our login.js where we're going to log in our users. I'm going to go to login.js. Now within login.js, we simply have a simple form that basically submits that but hasn't yet submitted it one yet. And remember for the previous videos, we used React form hook React hook form for us to uh, carry out some form validation on our clients. So let's go ahead and use React hook. I'm going to change some of the code here. So I'm just going to import a use form from React form. So I'm going to import the use form hook. So I'm going to say use form. So I'm going to import that from React hook form. And after doing this, I'm simply going to come here and access the following. So I'm going to uh, access, I'm going to spam and say const, and I'm going to destructure the use, the use form hook. And what I'll need is to get a register, get register, and I'll get handle submit, the handle submit. In this case, it's going to be handle submit. I'll also get watch. Also get in this case I'll get a form state. So the form state will give us access to errors. So let me try to fix this. So this is going to give us access to errors. So after doing this, I am now going to discard the various uh, the various hooks we've been using to manage our form state. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm also going to remove this. So we need to basically remove this. Now what I'll do is to come right in here and what I'll do is to remove this. So when I remove this, I'll instead register them. So I'll use the register statement. Um, let's say um, register. So we're going to register this as our username, just like you saw in the previous video for validation. This is going to be our username. And then we pass in the various validation rules. So in this case, we shall pass in our first rule as required. So this is going to be required uh, being true. So, and then we can also pass in a max length. So we can say a max length is going to be equal to 25. 
So we can also add some uh, errors in case you have any errors. So I can come here and say that uh, errors. So since we have the form state that gives us access to our errors, we can access our errors by saying errors. But then you pass in username and then we specify the error. So I'm going to specify the error as this case is going to be a simple paragraph and then it's going to have a style. So I'll just give it a style. This is going to be an object basically having a color. This color is going to be red. So in this thing, in this uh, example, we shall just use a small tag that's going to create a small text and then we pass in the error. So in this case, the error may be password. Uh, so let's try to say password is red. I need to save this, and when I save this, I'm also going to remove this. So I'm going to remove this from uh, our form control password, and then register it also. So I come and register it. So say register, and then right in here, I'll pass in the password, and then I'll pass in the various validation rules for our password. So the password is going to be a uh, word. And then I'll pass in true since we need this to be required. After making it required, the next thing I'll say is also like the main link, the main password. I mean, password is going to be eight. So after doing this, I am going to go to just console log watch so as to keep track of whatever I'm inputting into our. Into our form. So what I'll do is to just console log and then watch. Then I'll console log our username. So if I save this and head over to our client, I'm going to go to our browser, our React app. So try refreshing. So you see, you cannot find module React hook form. Let's see how we are going to fix this. So I'm going to head over to our visual studio and check where the error is. So we basically have from the space React hook. Let's try to fix this. I'm going to correct this thing. React hook form. And when I save and head over to our client, in this case, we see that our login page has been shown. So since we have our errors on the username, we straight submit a form without a username. So right now, this login button doesn't work yet. So let's go and make it work. So I will head over to our Visual Studio code. And within our Visual Studio code, I'll come to the event on the click. So on click, login user. So what we're going to do is to actually add the handle submit function to this. I'm going to say handle. This is going to be submit. And then login user. So let's try to see we are having some errors. We are not actually. So in I save, we head over to our clients. And right here, we see that when we submit this form, we see that our validations are now working. Let me add the validation for our password and also correct that validation on our username field. So I'm going to do this. We're going to be using this required. And then what I'm also going to do is to use the same validation. So in this case, I'll also add a validation for uh, for our max length error. So if we have a, an error of, us, of our username such to the max length, in this case, we're going to use such. What I'll do is to say um, error is the username that dot type equal to. So in this case, if the type is equal to max length, so we are basically Validating the max length. So in this case, we say uh, max length. In this case, if the max length is uh, we're having an error in our max length, what we shall show this error. So in this case, I'll get a simple paragraph. Then I'll style it. So I'll say style equal to. In this case, we shall say that our color is going to be red. And what we shall do is to create some small tags in here, just like we've been doing for the various errors. Then right in here, what we shall say is password. Actually, we shall say uh, in length. 
max length should be so we shall actually say max so I say user name should be 25 characters so I need to also correct this and simply going to remove that so right now we have this so basically main save and head over to our client so right here we have our username so let's try to put something longer so we see that our username should be 25 characters when you remove this you see that our username is required so our validation for our username is working so i'm also going to copy the same and do the same for the password so i'm going to copy this same uh, validation is it on the password field so what i'm going to come here into the form group and then right in here i'll just come and say save so in this case it's going to be errors dot password so since our field is password and then i'm also going to say password in this case our password is going to be so in this case password should be more than eight characters so this is going to be more, more than characters so right now we are having this so let me try to tidy this up try to bring this here so this is our validation for our password i also do the same validation for our required validation rule so i'm going to copy this paste it so right now this is going to be password is required so when i save this i'm going to be able to so when i save this i am going to to be having both the validation for the required attribute as well as the validation for our max length or our mean length so when i go back to our front end and so we see that first both uh, validations are working i need to come right here and we need to put in a username insert a password so in a insert a password by putting in a password and go again so let's see what our console log is going to do so when they open the, the log the console the console uh we see that right now we can keep track of whatever we input into our username fields so let's try to do the same for our password fields and it head over to our code and within our code i'm also going to console log watch password After doing this, uh, when I head over to our client, uh, we um, I'm going to try to submit, and then when we submit, you see that now we keep track of both our username and our password. So right in here, what you're going to do is to now handle our login, uh, our login functionality. So right now we have our button that has an on-click listener. So this on-click listener is an on-click handler. So this handler is basically going to log in a user. But then it's going to make that use of the data that we have in our login form. For example, here we say it handle submit login user. The login user currently does nothing, so we are going to be manipulating it to our advantage in this case. We're going to uh, pass in a data parameter, and then within this, we're just going to console log data. So I'll do console log. In this case, I'm going to call the data. Let's try to see what this is going to do. So when I head over to our client and we submit our form, for now we see that it console logs an object containing our username and our password. So let's try to refresh and clear our form. Also we need to make use of a reset, a reset function from React hook form. I need to import that, so I'll just come right in here and say import reset. And then right here after console logging our data what i'll just do is to call this 
this is going to reset our phone. So I'm going to come right here and put in a username, put in a password. And now when I submit, you see that our form has been reset. So now the next thing we're going to do is to actually make a request to our login endpoint. So when I go to our API documentation, our login endpoint is slash hot slash login. I need to go ahead and do this. We need to come right here and what I'll do is to create an object containing our request options. Remember, every time we carry out a post request, we specify the method, the body, and the headers we're going to send with that post request. In this case, what I'm going to do is create that object containing all that data. So we need to say post request options. Our request options object is going to have method. So our method is going to be post. And then, uh, since our method is going to be post, another thing I'm going to say is the header. So we're going to specify the headers we're going to send with this request. So the going to send a header called the content type is going to basically give a description of the data we're going to send. So I'm going to say content type. And in this case, our content type is going to be application slash JSON, which means that we're going to send our data as JSON. Now, the next thing we shall do is to specify the body that data we're going to pass to our server, that we're going to send to our server in this request. So our, that our body, in this case, is just going to be our data, since the data is now uh, an object containing the various fields, the various data we input in our fields. So in this case, we're going to say body is going to be JSON. Dot. In this case, we're going to say stringify. And then we pass in our so this is going to be our data. So right now we have our request options uh, object that specifically having all this. So I'm going to correct that. So once we have all this, we are going to just make a fetch request. So I'm going to come and make a fetch request here. Uh -huh. here. So our fetch request is going to basically make a request to that login endpoint so that we access the access token and the refresh token. So I need to do that with fetch. And then we're going to say fetch. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead over to our client. So right here we have our slash auth slash login. So this is where we're going to pass in our username and a password. So I need to come to our Visual Studio code and say slash auth slash login. And then pass in our request options. So I need to say uh, in this case, we need to say we need to pass in our request options. So I need to say request options. And then after this, we shall access the response. So I'll say response, and then this response is going to be in JSON. So say response to JSON. I'm keeping things for I'm keeping things simple right now. However, you can use any other tool such as uh, Axios. So in this case, for me, I'm using uh, Fetch API to keep things simple. So then I'll just access the data. So I'll say the then data. And we shall simply console log the data so that we see if our, our request is successful. So what I'll do is to console.log then the data that's going to come with the, with the request. So I'm going to save this and then I save and head over to our client. So I'm going to go to, back to our Chrome, to our client. So I'm going to head over here, I'm going to create a simple username. Actually, let me remove these watch statements since now we see that our fields are working. So I'm going to remove these watch statements and also remove it from here. So I head over to our client, put in a username and a valid password. When I log in, you see that our server is now responding with our access token as well as our refresh token. So we're going to be making use of the login. Uh, Function that's going to log in a user, and by logging in a user, what we mean in this case is going to extract our access token and then store it in our local storage. So, by storing it in our local storage, as long as it's not expired, we shall be able to access the different protected rails of our application. Let's go ahead and do that. To do that, I'm simply going to come right in here and I'm going to come and import login. So, what I'm going to do is to import login for my auth. 
from our author file. So I would say import login. So in this case, it's login from the, the slash auth. So when I import login, I'll just come right in here. So what we shall need is our access token. So in this case, we see that we are having an object having the key of access token. So we shall access the access token by saying data dot access token. I'll just come right in here and I'll say console log data dot access token. And then we shall log in. So in this case, login takes in an access token. So we shall pass in a token just like you can see here, new tokens. And so in this case, we shall just simply come in here and say that we need to pass in our data dot access token. So once we create this access token, what we shall also want to do is to redirect a user to our want to redirect a user to our home page. So to do that, we are going to make use of uh, a hook called use history for uh, our React router. Now, if you watched the previous videos, I created one where we showed routing in React. So in this case, we're going to use React router to redirect our user to another page after logging in. What I'm going to do is to come right in here and then import uh, our use history hook. So I may come and say, "Port actually, I'll just use import use history from React Router." So after that, actually, this is supposed to be a React Router. You see, it's going to be React Router. So let's try this. It's going to be from React. So this is going to be from React Router. Done. So what I want to do is to import use history. So after doing that, I'm going to uh, create a variable which I mean to call history. So this is going to be const history. It's going to be for to use history so what this is going to help us to do is to uh, redirect to another page and by redirecting to another page we shall just push uh push the we shall have to push the next page to this history so what i'm going to do is to come here and what i'll say is history what push and then we shall redirect to our route just like you can see push we pass in the path which is the path to the page you want to redirect to and then this page so in this case we want to just pass in the, the home page so after saving this we need to come right here our page is refreshed so we need to provide a valid username and a valid password so when I log in, you see that our access token is being logged and we are redirected to our home page. So right now we when I maximize this, we can see that we have the different the, the same um, we are currently having the same links when we are logged in and when we are logged out. So I'm going to use conditional rendering to change these links to show the nav bar showing different links for when we are logged in as well as when we are logged out. So to do this, I mean to use, use auth hook. So the use auth hook provides us with uh, things such as logged and which can help us to determine whether a user is logged in or not. And then we can use those in, in uh, conditional rendering to show if a user is logged in or not. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to come right in my Visual Studio code. And what I'm going to do in this case is to go to our navbar.js. So I'm going to go to our navbar component. So what you want to do is to show different links when users are logged in and show different links to when users are logged out. I need to import. What I'm going to do is to import. I'll import uh, this auth from, from the auth file we created. So this is going to be our use auth. And then after importing use auth, I'll come within our navbar component and then I'll access the logged state. So in this case, I'll say const. So in this case, it's going to be use, use auth. 
So I'm going to access the log state, which is going to determine whether a user is logged in or not. So right, right here, we're going to use conditional rendering. So right now we have our container fluid that's containing all these links. And now we have recipes, uh, we have home, sign up, login. What we want to do is to render this when the user is logged in and when the user is logged out. I can basically do that by creating a component. I can create a component for a logged in links and a component for logged out links. So I can simply do that by coming right here at the top and then say first uh, log, log in uh, links. So we call this logged in links. It's going to be equal to a uh, function based component. This function based component is simply going to return some JSX. And the JSX it's going to return are the links that you're going to show us for the currently logged in uh, user. So in this case, we're going to say div. We need to put in a div. And then actually, I want to put in a div. What I'll do is to use fragments. So I'm going to use just fragments. Just come right in here and pass in fragments and then come uh, remove the login link. So I'll remove the login link. And when I remove the login link, I'm going to just simply paste it in here. And then I'll also add our, our home link. So just going to come right in here and copy our login link, our home link, then paste it at the top of the logout link. So what we have is a home and logout when the user is logged in, and then the rest of the other links when the user is logged out. So let's try to see how this is going to work. So I'm going to tidy this up, going to format the whole file. So now everything is tidy. We're also going to create our so I'm going to call this const uh, logged out links. What I want to do is to use conditional rendering. So I'll just do, it's going to be a function-based hook, I mean function-based component. I'll also return, right in here, I'll return. So I'll use uh, these fragments, then come right in here. So I'm going to copy all these links home sign up I actually forgot one really important link so i'm going to pop to cut it and then insert it within our login link so it's going to just be around here so made save so now i'm going to go right in here also uh, remove this so when i remove them i'm going to just simply paste them in our let me try to see the mistake I did. He did cut them, so let me cut them and then paste them in here. Need to tidy everything. So right now I see that they are now tidy. So right now we have home sign up and login when the user is logged out, and then we have home get recipes and log out when the user is signed in. So what we need is to use conditional rendering to show different links on our nav bar. What I'm going to do is just come right in here and I'll use conditional rendering. So since we have our state of logged right in here, so what I can do is to say, if logged, do this. If not logged, then do that. So I'm going to just simply do that by coming in here and so I'll just come right in here and what I'll do is to say, logged. If logged, then we shall just simply uh, use the log, logged in links. Else, then we shall use the logged out links. So let's try to do this. So in this case, we shall see logged out links. So after doing that, I'm going to save and then you head over to our client. Since we, let me try to refresh. So right here, we see, since we are logged in, we can see home, create recipes, and log out. So we are also going to work on our home page so that it shows a list of recipes instead of showing us get started. So to do that, I'm simply going to come and change this. I'm going to go to our home page, so our home.js, and I'll do the same thing. So what I'll do is to come right in here, I'll create a component. So in this case, it's going to be const 
report it is going to be uh so in this case i'll say return we shall say return so in this case we shall just return a simple div a class name so in this case i'll just give it a class name of recipes and then we shall just have a simple h1 right here and this is going to be the list of recipes so right in here what i'll do is to actually also come and create another component so right in here i'm going to come remove this and then after removing this i'll create another component for logged out so I'll just come const uh, logged, logged out home. and this is simply going to be uh, equal to a uh, function based component that's going to return so here we're going to have welcome recipes and a list of recipes if we are logged in so what i'll do is to use uh we're going to use conditional rendering in this case and say if logged so that means i'll have to make use of the use auth hook so i'm going to import it so i need to say import use auth hook from that from auth then i'll just come in here in our home page and then i'll access the state so i'll come and say const is going to be equal to use use of and then here if we are logged we are going to render this component so we shall say uh, logged logged in home else we are going to render logged out home so actually this is supposed to be these are supposed to be components so let me fix this so i may actually be forced to just uh put this inside simple div so i'm just going to put this in a div then do that so right now it's fixed so in save and head over to our client we see that now instead of having a list of recipes instead of having that welcome message you have a list of recipes now let's go ahead and work on our logout uh on our logout link so our logout link is supposed to destroy the token that's in our local storage so i'm going to head over to our to our navbar.js and work on that logout component logout link so the logout link is found within our logged in links so right here so i'm actually going to change this to uh, i'm going to change this to uh, an, a simple href or a button in this case so i may add it as a button or an href so let me turn it into an href and i mean an anchor tag <laughs> sorry for that <laughs> So it's going to be an anchor tag and in this case it's not going to have a serious it's not going to have an href we shall see a warning for this but let me just do that i'm also going to change this to a so after doing this uh, i'm going to simply come right at the top here then we shall import logout from auth i'm just going to come right in here say logout so right in here i'll add i'm going to add uh we simply add uh, an on click that i'll raise to be called in our navbar component so to do that i'm just going to simply come and then i'll load the links and i'll add an on click so this is going to be on click it's going to be equal to on actually let me just Call the logout, so I'll just simply come and say logout. So in this case, if we click this, we are going to just log out the user. So let me save this. Head over to our component, and then we see that when we click that, we uh, we can just uh, be able to sign in again. So let's go ahead and log in. So in the login, in this case, see in the login, I can be able to. 
provide a username and a password and when I log in with the right credentials, I'm redirected to home. Let's try to see what is happening here. Go to our applications and access our local storage. So right now our local storage does not have our token. So let's try to try to see this. You need to go and see the documentation in here for logging out. All right, so uh, how we going to fix that is by coming to our, so we need to come right in here to our logout. So this is supposed to actually uh, have a function that calls logout. So we need to come simply create a function that's going to call logout. So when I save this, we try the whole sign up, I mean login sign in process. So let's try to see we have we are having an error here. This is basically supposed to be like this. And this solves our error. So I mean save. When I save, I'm going to head over to our client and try to log in again. So when I log in, a valid username, valid password. Login. So in this case, we see that we are currently logged in. So when we log out, we see that we can be able to log out.